Hello everyone, I'm Ivan, and today I'll be guiding you through the first steps you'll need to take to get your Microformer 2 set up for the first time. Please note that this video is in addition to, rather than in replacement of the instruction manual. You still have to read the instruction manual before using the Microformer, as there's a lot of safety information in there. Anyway, let's get started. First of all, you'll need to take the Microformer 2, the bottle of fog liquid, and the charging cable out of the box. You'll also need some sort of USB charger. Here, just, we're just using a power bank. You'll notice that if you try to turn on the microfogger right now, nothing will happen. That's because we've placed it in a locked state during shipping to prevent accidental activations. To activate it, to unlock it, you'll just simply need to start charging it. Once you plug it in, you'll notice that the bottom LED will start flashing orange. This just simply means that it's charging, but it's not fully charged yet. When it is fully charged, it'll start blinking green, and we highly recommend you wait until this happens, as the first charge is crucial for further battery health. While that's happening, we can go ahead and refill the fog liquid tank, which is just this little cylinder up here. It's always good practice to unscrew the fog liquid tank while holding the microfogger in this sort of orientation, because later on, once you do have liquid in there and you're refilling it, if you unscrew it while the microfogger is vertical, it'll just spill out. So, go ahead, hold it like this, and just unscrew it. It's super simple, and once you've done that, you can set your microfogger aside for the minute. When you take a look inside the fog liquid tank, you'll notice that there is a cavity going around the circumference of the tank, in between a glass and metal wall. What you want to do is fill that cavity up with liquid. Please take care not to get any liquid in the central cavity, as that is just a hole through which the air will go through later on. If you get any in there, it's not a big deal. You can simply wipe it away, but if you notice any sort of bubbling during operation, any sort of bubbling noise during operation, that's probably because you got some liquid in the central cavity. Anyway, go ahead and use your bottle of fog liquid to fill it up using the fine pipette end. So once the liquid is at the top of the inner cavity, go ahead and set your fog liquid aside and we can now screw the fog liquid tank back onto the microfogger. It's just as simple, go ahead and thread it on and you want to make sure that it's fairly tight. If it isn't then you run the risk of it leaking later on. Once you've screwed the tank onto the microfogger, leave the microfogger for about 30 minutes just to rest in a vertical orientation. This will give the liquid a chance to seep into the heating coil. Once you've done so, and you've charged the battery up to a level where the bottom LED is blinking green, you can go ahead and turn on your microfogger too for the first time. To do so, simply press the top button five times pretty quickly, just like this. And you'll notice that two LEDs come on. The bottom LED is the battery indicator, and the top LED is the status indicator. You'll find exact color combinations, color codes, of these two LEDs in the instruction manual, and this will tell you exactly what state the microfogger is in. Using the microfogger is also pretty simple. Simply hold down the main power button, while the microfogger is on, and it'll start making smoke. You can also adjust the properties of the smoke that comes out of the microfogger. For this, you've got two options at your disposal. You can change the airflow setting, which is which will determine how quickly the smoke comes out of the microfogger, and the smoke density setting, which will determine how thick the smoke is. By default, when you get your microfogger, it'll be in the smoke density setting. So when it is in this setting, you can simply press the plus and minus buttons to adjust the density. You'll also get feedback in real time, so you can determine exactly what setting you need. Let's give it a go. Here we go, and you can see that right now it's in the full density setting. If we press the minus button a few times, it'll be in the uh, lowest density setting. The difference is quite noticeable, and you'll be able to get a few different effects by switching these modes. Similarly, you can also change the speed setting using the plus and minus buttons, but to do that, you'll need to actually hold the minus button for two seconds and wait until the top LED flashes twice. Once that happens, you'll be in the airflow mode setting and you can do the exact same thing. As you can see, this is the lowest speed and this is the highest speed. To revert back to the 
smoke density setting, simply hold the plus button for two seconds and just like last time, the top LED will blink twice to confirm your change. While you're using the microfiber, always remember to keep an eye out on the liquid level inside the fluid tank. You can do so through the little glass windows that are on the sides of the tank and never let the liquid get to below a quarter as that could damage the coil if you keep on using the microfiber. If you ever notice the smoke starting to smell burnt, that means that the coil has worn out and you'll need to replace it with the spare one provided. Instructions on how to replace the coil are found in the instruction manual, which can be accessed via this QR code. If you've got any questions about using the microfiber, please check the FAQ section of our instruction manual as that question may have already been answered there. If not, our support email is also linked down in the description below. Thanks for watching and we hope you found this video useful.